each with each other after the football season is over and uh have thing about the Cowboys you know this year I think probably is supposed to have one of their better teams but you know you uh, prepare for them you know that you're gonna right now the Falcons preparing to kick off the co-captains for this evening were number nine Derek Fletcher number 63 Jeff Galino number 73 Rich DeChalk and number 80 Don Hauser the Falcons have elected to kick off to begin this game doing the kicking chores for the Falcon is number 48 Matt Marakovic uh, jr. Deep for the Cowboys, number 29 and number 34, Matt Gilchrist and Tyrone Lockett will be deep to receive. I can tell already that it'll be hard to read the numbers of the Cheney players. The red on black isn't very visible from this spot. That's 34 receiving Lockett, and he has a nice return. He's in the open yardage. And he'll bring it all the way back out to the 37-yard line where the Cowboys will start with good field position. And something we'll have to be uh, aware of tonight, Kevin, is the speed of the Cowboys. You do probably have some kids that can run better than the, some of the kids they've had in the recent years. And I think if you look back, we were talking about the scrimmages. South gave us a problem, I think, you know, with their quickness. And uh, hopefully, you know, we do a little bit better job tonight of tackling some of the uh, speedy backs that the Cowboys have. Quarterback for the Cowboys is number 23, and that's 36 is the ball carrier, Dave Delbacchio, and he has good yardage, close to a first down, pick up of about nine on the play. There's a, another example, you know, what we were just saying there, you know, we just, against South in that scrimmage, Kevin didn't tackle very well. We had people there, and uh, we just didn't hit and wrap. Ended up picking up probably about seven or eight yards where it should have been stopped for no gain. It's usual for Coach Hartman to have the Falcons go out on defense first, usually so they can get the first hits out of the way and make some big plays on defense. But right there, the Cheney's produ Cheney Cowboys produced. Bring up second down and two. Ball now resting on the Cowboys' 46-yard line. It's going to be a pass right over the middle, and 34 has the reception. Tyrone Lockett, he's already in the Falcon territory. That will be a pickup of close to 15 yards, and now the Cowboys are on the move. And I guess, uh, too, Kevin, we heard a lot of rumors about how poorly Cheney looked against Campbell in the scrimmage. You know, Campbell just, uh, as a lot of people said, annihilated him. And uh, this is uh, not what Coach Hartman, I think, wanted to hear because the kids sometimes think they're going to go out there and have it easy, you know, because they're up against a Cowboy team that, you know, maybe got handled by somebody during a scrimmage. Handoff to the second man out of the backfield, and he has stopped right away. Good play up front, number 80, Don Hauser, number 29 for the Falcons. Chuck Campbell in on that stop. Pickup of only two for the Cowboys. One good sign there, Kevin. We got four or five people to the football, but again, you know, we had the, the initial contact there. We couldn't bring down uh, a back who is really not that big and you know, uh, more of a speed type, you know, a quick runner than he is a power back, and we just we're having, we're having trouble bringing people down. Well, maybe some of that inexperience of the Falcons is showing right now. Cheney is on the move. Second down and eight. Ball resting on the Falcons' 40-yard line. The pitch is to the third man in the backfield. And he's able to pick up three on the carry. Stop was made by Marakovich, number 48. Number 77, Ben Burton. And number 79, John Polish. And the first key situation of the game, we got, what, third and six, and Cheney's got a pretty good drive going, so, uh, you know, we're almost, again, I think, in uh, four-down territory. We're just inside the 40, so we got to come up with two pretty good football plays here. It's interesting what you mentioned earlier about the scrimmages. Most people like to see those scrimmages, and they start uh, assessing the future, but when the first game comes around, it's surprising how quickly teams will pull together and how good they'll do. Third down and six. Pitches to number 29, and he slips, and that'll be down right there. So he loses three yards on the play, and it'll bring up a first fourth down situation and probably a punting situation for the Cowboys. Yeah, we got people with the football again, Kevin. And going back again, you know, we've talked a lot about those scrimmages already. You know, we're just in the middle of the first quarter, but you know, I can remember when we were coaching, we, we really never wanted to look that good in, in a scrimmage. Again, you know, it always gave you things to work on, you know, during the week after or a couple of days after the scrimmage. And sometimes, you know, it didn't, the kids didn't get that big head or overconfidence, to, more or less to say. And uh, I think we always did better during the year when we didn't have good scrimmages. Wesson back deep for this punt. 
and he's going to let it go, and it's going to bounce on the five, and if Cheney can cover it, we are going to start in poor field position for our first offensive possession of the night. Well, that was a nice punt there by the Cowboys punter, and we're starting on our own six-yard line. 34-yard punt, but a very effective 34 yards. And up to this point, uh, Cheney looks like a pretty good football team, Kevin. Everything's going their way with the exception of that one play there where the running back slipped and fell. And now we've got uh, what, about 96 yards. We've got to go for a score. So we've got our work cut out. We've got to try and at least get, you know, get out in some decent field position you know, if we do have to punt. Derek Fletcher Sr. will be at the helm for the Falcons this year. This is his second year as starting quarterback. Handoff is number 32, Wesson, and he has some open room, and he has speed. And that's going to take him all the way out to the Falcons' 25-yard line. Pick up of 20 yards on the first play. Well, that's a good sign for a Falcon offense that was quite lethargic in the beginning of the season last year. And it's also a good sign in this football game, Kevin, because Cheney's always been a tough football team to, to run the football on. And, you know, we come out, and we're on our five-yard line, and first play from uh you know, at scrimmage, we pick up about 20 yards. Uh, that, uh, that's a pretty good sign right now. Falcons this year not running the wing tee, as said in the past. It's more of a straight tee at some moments with two halfbacks, and there's no designated wing back this year, but there's still a lot of sim similarities to uh, last year's formation. Handoff is the number 48, Marakovic, and he's going to pick up about five on the play to bring up second down and five. Number 66 on the stop for the Cowboys. That's Chuck Kraus, a defense, defensive end for the Cowboys. And uh, you know, a question that you asked me earlier, Kevin, about the key to you know, success you know, for this football season, and I think right now you know, we're showing pretty good signs of that, and that's controlling the line of scrimmage. And we didn't do too bad of a job, really, defensively. just didn't tackle well. And here offensively, we're coming off the ball well, and we're getting uh, some decent running room. Wesson's now at the wing, split end to the far side of the field. On the counter, Fletcher's going to hand off to, let's see who the ball carrier was for the Falcons. That's number 34 is the ball carrier. Albert, Albert Connor at the junior. He's going to pick up about two. Now comes a first third down situation for the Falcons and a possible passing or running situation here. We were only one man there from breaking that one. Too, Kevin. Somebody, you know, I couldn't see who it was. As you said, it's going to be difficult picking numbers out for the Cowboys, but somebody was even down on the ground, just reached out with an arm and tripped him up. Otherwise, you know, we've got uh, at least a first down and probably a lot more. Marakovic, the lone back behind Fletcher. Third down and four. Fletcher's going to throw the ball, but it will be a keeper, and he's going to get the first down yardage. And he's out to the 40-yard line where the Falcons have a first first down, well, the second first down of the evening. He's going to pick up nine yards on that play. That's a good offensive play for Derek to one run, Kevin, because he, uh, you know, he, he throw, does a decent job of throwing the football, and is, a, you know, just like having another running back back there. He's got some good quickness and a uh, real good open field runner, so it puts a lot of pressure on the outside people there for the Cowboys. Now the Falcons will use a lot of switching of the formation. Handoff is going to be that handoff to 32 to Wesson, and he's going to open it up on that what used to be the wingback counter trap. Now it's just the counter trap, I suppose, since there is no wingback. But either way, it's productive for the Falcons. It's going to pick up close to first down yardage, and the Falcons are going to get right into Cheney Cowboy territory. And I think we're going to break one here real quick, Kevin, because we're getting, getting some people into that secondary, and we got some people who can scoot. Wesson uh, is a great open field runner, and we keep getting holes like that for him. It's only a matter of time before he breaks uh, you know, a decent size uh, gain or for a decent size gain. Well, while they're measuring, let's set up the offense down on the field and that lines that's not doing such a good job of opening holes for the backs. At tackles for the Falcons, number 73, Rich DeChock, and number 79, John Porsche. Uh, excuse me. That was the defense. Let's try this now. Yes, yeah, 79, John Polish is the tackle out there on the field on offense as well as defense. The other tackle is number 72, Trent Mascola. At guards, we have number 63, Jeff Galino, and number 53, Todd Samar Samargia. At center is number 68, Tony Dorenzo. And the tight end in the front line that is doing so well tonight is number 80, Don Hauser. So the Falcons now have a second down and very short one. Ball resting just inside Cheney territory. 
Fletcher's going to pass on first down. He sees his opening, and he's moving, but he's going to get the first down, but not much more. Pick up about three on the play. It's interesting for Coach Hartman to call a pass in such a second and short situation. Yeah. Dave usually isn't known as a frequent flyer when it comes to passing. That did kind of surprise me, Kevin. But again, you know, the type of play he ran is just what I talked about here, you know, earlier. The fact that, you know, you can get Derek out there and you've got, you know, the option to run or pass. And probably I would say you're probably going to see him run more often than pass. And that wasn't a real risky play, but you're right. You know, we usually don't do those types of things in those situations. Have the lone back again, Marakovic behind Fletcher. And he's going to get the carry. He has some open territory, and he has the end zone in sight. He's still up on his feet, and he's to down to the 20-yard line. So that's a pickup of 22 yards on the play. Big pickup for number 48, Matt Marakovic, a junior. And a good sign, too. Yeah, we're doing just about anything we want to right now on offense. And it, again, the reason why is those people up front are doing the job. You know, we're doing a decent job running with the football as far as the backs are concerned. But uh, <laughs> a lot of daylight there. Going back to the pass, uh, Dave Hartman right now has the ability to call whatever play he wants. It seems we're controlling the line of scrimmage, and we are setting the tone of the game, and that's one in favor of the Falcons. This one coaching is fun, Jeff. <laughs> First down and 10, ball resting on the 19-yard line. Wesson in motion, handoff to Marakovic again. He stumbles forward for about six on the carry. And and this is a typical Falcon drive, too, because, you know, we look up at the clock and there's only four and a half minutes left in the first quarter. So, yeah, if, uh, we are similar to Mooney. We've talked about that before. You know, we very seldom do break the big play, but, uh, you know, we, when we do score, we eat up a quarter or so of the clock and uh, puts a lot of pressure on the other football team. Play catch-up football. Fox now facing with a second-and-five situation. Split to this side of field, number 10, Jeff Scott. Fletcher's going to throw the ball. He has number 32, Chuck Wesson, and Wesson is into the end zone for a touchdown. That will be a 13-yard pass reception. Fletcher to Wesson for the first points of the season for the Falcons and a quick six. And a, kind of a different call, again, by Coach Hartman there. But, you know, the thing was, you know, we've got, they've got everybody jammed up in there because, you know, they're having trouble stopping the run and a little play action there. We've got somebody wide open. So, again, not a real risky call, but uh, something, you know, out of the ordinary for our coaching staff. Right now, the Falcons will be kicking for their point after. Number 30 is doing the kicking chores. And as we all in the press bucket found out, we don't have a 30 on the rosters. So we'll try to find out who that is. And that is no good. Maybe for not having his name on the roster is good at this moment, but that'll be no good. And the Falcons will stay ahead with 357 remaining in the first period, six to nothing. Well, I guess uh, my sense a pretty impressive start, Kevin. You know, everybody's talking about you know the fact that we'd be lucky to win three, four ball games again this year, just just like they did a couple years ago, and I think we ended up like nine and one. But uh, boy, you can take the football on your own five, six yard line and drive the length of the field, you know, against a pretty decent football team like the Cowboys. Uh, I don't know. I think okay. a lot of these people are going to be. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, looking top to bottom on the Falcons roster, we really don't have the size this year as we had in the past, but this team kind of reminds me of that 1986 playoff team. They didn't have the size either, but they had a lot of finesse and a lot of enthusiasm, and right now the Falcons have been showing both of those on that opening drive. Now we have a uh, kicking off again. It is number 48, Mac Marakovic, will be kicking off for the second time this evening. Deep to receive again is number 34 for the Cowboys, Tyrone Lockett, and number 29, Matt Gilchrist. This is always a critical part of the game, the special teams, and Falcons try to stress this as much as possible. Nice kick by Marakovic, takes Lockett back to his five-yard line, but he finds some open room, and finally he swarmed under number 29 and... 
Number 22 on the stop for the Falcons. That's Mike Rob Tomo. Toffel and Chuck Hamill on the stop. Does it count? That's a good point, Kevin, about the special teams because, again, just like in this situation, you know, they can do it, really help the defense out a lot because here we're making, you know, I don't know what your goals were, but we used to have a goal of keeping inside the 30-yard line. You had to give them poor field position. And then it kind of sets the tempo of the game, too. They go down and make a good stip and stick. It kind of fires the defense up a little bit. And that will have Turek starting from his 27-yard line. He hands off right up to the middle, and the ball carrier goes nowhere. Number 28 on the stop for the Falcons. That's Michael Torno. Also, Chuck Campbell in on the stop. And again, we're getting two, three, four, five people to the football, Kevin. That's a good sign. You know, again, if you are not, if you're not tackling real well, at least you know that there's, you know, other people there to help out. But uh, Cheney backs aren't getting the yardage they did the first time they had the football on that first drive. We're bringing people down now at the point of contact. Lock it in motion for the Cowboys. Sweep this way, and a good play by the Falcons. Number 77 gets himself a TFL, a tackle for the loss. That is defensive tackle number 77, Ben Burton, a junior. Nice play on his part. It's going to be a loss of three on that play. He was able to penetrate and stop that sweep dead in its tracks. And right now we're just controlling that line of scrimmage, Kevin. And the Cowboys <laughs> just don't look like the same football team they did during that first drive. And, of course, uh, we don't look like the same team either defensively doing a much better job. Quickly the momentum turned, and now the Falcons are playing very good football. Turk's going to pass for the second time this evening. He has lots of time in the backfield. And now he's shooting downfield. He has an open receiver, but it is way over his head. I don't know what scared me more in that play, how much time Turek had to throw the ball or how open the receiver was. Both, Kevin. I think the reason probably why he did come open like that was I think that originally you know, the play was designed to go the other way, and I think it was a kind of a broken pattern. He just picked up another route and uh, did find some open area. Unfortunately, the, you know, the pass wasn't accurate because they'd have had a big gain and maybe a score. Fletcher and Opalik were on the coverage there. Chuck Wesson is now back deep to return his second punt of the evening. Wesson is a threat because of his speed. Also, he was the leading punt returner in the SBC last year, averaging 17.9 yards per return. Well, this punt does not even give him a chance to return. It's going to roll in the Falcon territory and stop dead on the 43-yard line. So the Falcons will start with good field position. As you probably noticed, the Falcons do a lot of changing in their lineup, and a lot of people will be seen out there tonight on the field. It's usually the situation, a lot of people alternating. So we'll try to keep you on top of all the changes that happen in the Falcon offense and defense. And this is a key point for the Cowboys here, Kevin, because if uh, we just move the football down the field at will and score again, uh, you know, things could get out of hand here. Handoff is 34, Albert Connorth, and he's going to get good yards. He's still spinning his way, so he's going to pick up 10, an extra three on his strong effort towards the end. Good run by Connorth. And the Cowboys right now are kind of tackling like we did in that first series, Kevin. They're really not wrapping. Of course, uh, the Falcons are doing a pretty decent job running the ball there. Albert just uh, spinning and turning and uh, breaking through uh, some arm tackles there and picked up a nice first down. Everything's working right now for the Falcons. Their line's exploding. Their backs are running good. In the backfield, you have Wesson and number 40, Jeff Powers. Connors in motion and Wesson on the counter, and he's going to bust forward for a good five yards. There's nothing the Cowboys can do right now to stop the Falcons' surge. And that's the key there, too, Kevin. I don't think they've really done much of a job on first down. You know, we're getting four and five, six yards of crack, and, uh, you know, that, uh, as we pointed out earlier, makes play calling a little bit easier. You know, now you've got uh, two downs or three downs to pick up maybe only four yards, and uh, that's usually not too difficult for us to do. Number 10, Jeff Scott brings in the play for the Falcons. He's alternating at split end with number 22, Rob Tofill, bringing in Dave Hartman's calls from the sidelines. Second down and five, ball on the Cowboys' 41-yard line. Powers on his first carry of the evening, and he's still going all the way down to the 30-yard line. Is that a relative of yours, Kevin? Pickup of eight yards, yes. If you did notice the last name out there is familiar. It is my younger brother. He's out on the field. The fourth and last in the many of us at of the Powers family who did play football. That's all good ones, too, Cal. 
You also notice a lot of names that are familiar on the Falcon team. A lot of people out there. Starry's younger, Matt, Mike Starry's younger brother, Matt Starry's out there. Tony Dorenzo's at center. His young, his older brother, John Dorenzo, just graduated last year. He was center. There's many more names that are familiar. Wesson in motion, and Powers gets the handoff again, and he's able to get through the line of scrimmage for a pickup of about four. Then you got a family like the Tofills that go way back. Because I think the older brother, uh, Todd, played football back when I coached, and that wasn't even, you know, that was a few years before I decided to give it up. So that family there goes way back. But they've all, we've been fortunate, you know, we've had families like that, you know, they've all had great athletes and they just you know, continued on the tradition of good football players, especially here at Fitch. That is, that's a good strong indicator of the community and the support we have of the football program and all the heritage. Right now, I'd like to make an announcement in, the, in accordance with the Austintown School Levy that's going to be put on the ballot November 5th. We are asking the community to vote yes on the proposed 3.9 tax mill levy. Because of the effects of a state budget freeze, loss of local resources, and inflation, additional operating funds are needed to continue the excellent programs now in place at Austintown Fitch High School. And so we do ask you to support the Austintown Fitch High School and the Austintown Local School levy and vote yes in November. I was going to ask too, Kevin, they pay the electric bill. Somebody turn the lights out on us here. I can't see these numbers anymore. Yeah, it's interesting now. We're starting the season out down in the press box where usually we're up top until the weather gets a bit too cold for us. And it's always a difficult position here. It's sometimes difficult to see the numbers of the players and the numbers on the field. Right now it's good because the field is painted very nicely. They did a nice job on the numbers here this evening. So that'll be the end of the first quarter, and that was the exchange of quarter, and the Falcons still have possession of the ball. Second down and seven, ball on the Cowboys' 28-yard line. Score still, Falcons six, Cowboys nothing. Wesson hands off to Connors, but he's tripped up in the backfield, and he'll pick up one on the play. It'll bring up third down long, something the Falcons had to, hadn't had to face that much this evening. That play just took a little bit too long to develop, Kevin, and they got a little bit of penetration, and... Uh, Connor Albert was tripped up in the backfield there. So it'll bring up a third down situation. And again, we have to point out, you know, it's four down territory. We're down inside the 30 yard line. So we've got, you know, to figure out, you know, two good football plays, you know, that can pick us up at least seven yards or more. The way the Falcons have been going, I don't think they'll need the fourth down in this situation. And one back in the backfield, Jeff Powers, number 40. Connors in motion. Powers gets the call, and he has the open hole, and he's close to first down yardage. That last-ditch effort might have brought him to the 20-yard line, and that is enough for the first down. Yeah, like a little trap play up the middle there. We got, uh, obviously, some run a lot of running room, and then Jeff did a nice job there spinning and picking up the first down there. He got that last yard or so there with just a little bit of extra effort. You know, there's been a lot of talk about the change in the offense this year by the Falcons. They have eliminated the designated wing back. They'll still run the wing tee. And there are skeptics out there. I was one to begin with. But it seems to be running very smoothly, having two halfbacks and the fullbacks. There's a lot of possessions and a lot of ball carrying by a lot of individuals out there, and that's a lot of variety. And that's a lot of a lot of. Okay, first down and 10 ball on the Cowboys 20 yard line. Fletcher's going to roll out and throw the ball. He ducks it under and he's just going to get into the 17 yard line. Pick up only three on that play. And probably, you know, the reason for that change might be the fact that, you know, they're just adjusting to the personnel. You know, they feel maybe they have a couple kids in there that maybe should be running the football a little bit more. And, uh, you know, you have to give the coaching staff credit for making an adjustment like that. And of course, being able to adjust like that, sometimes, you know, some people, some staffs can't do that. Falcons right now have a lot of juniors and seniors out there, both on offense and defense, and they have a lot of people substituting. So that should keep them fresh for this ball game and for the rest of the season. Not many people are going both ways full time. Thirty-five in motion. Weston's going to get the counter, and he's going to push forward for about four. He's going to be about two yards short of the first down marker. Stop by Mark Gilchrist and Jeff Pauly. Gilchrist and Pauly on the stop for the Cowboys. And we got, what, about four to go, Kev? And we're on, what, the 15-yard line. So, again, four down territory. We just got to come up with two football plays again. Of course, last time you were right, Kev, we... We didn't need them. We picked up about eight on the uh, 
one carry by a member of the family. It's unfortunate though we can't you get to use the word gel that much this evening. I was talking to Ken Cran, the voice of the Falcons earlier, and we were talking about how the use of the word gel. But the Falcons have gelled, and right there in that play, they picked up another first down with Albert Connors picking up about six yards on the carry. They're inside the ten yard line in scoring position. And why, you know, we've pointed this out so many times, you know, in our broadcast here, Kevin, about being the underdog. And I always think that's an advantage. And of course, you know, knowing that the people that we have out there, the personnel that we have out there, I just uh, can't see us losing as many football games as some people think because we've got some pretty good athletes there. And I think when uh, the final bell tolls there, we're going to have our share of wins. Yeah, I've seen local news broadcasts, and uh, the Falcons' reviews for this upcoming season have been less than favorable. They're changing that image right now. Powers hits the line of scrimmage, and he's down to the five-yard line. Pickup of about four on the play. Yeah, Powers... And again, you know, we got a pretty good drive going. You know, we're four and five yarding them to death, and you look up there, you know, that old clock keeps ticking away. And uh, again, you know, we get a two, three touchdown lead on some teams, and it's pretty hard to, you know, come back against us because even if they do score once and, you know, the way our offense usually moves, you know, we get the ball back again. We're always good for six, seven play drive, and again, uh, you know, before you know it, the football game's gone. Cheney's only owned the ball about three minutes in this first half so far. And the Falcons have been able to dominate, and they scored six, and they're right now threatening to score six more. And that's 35's the ball carrier. He's in there. That's Jason Cosa at halfback, alternating in there with Albert Connorth. And he brings it to a third and goal to go with four yards to the goal line. You know, it's interesting. We always bring up, but the Falcons seem to always start first down and goal to go at like around the nine-yard line. It's always tough to put it in from there. Right, Kevin, we've always <laughs> made a point to bring that up, too, because over the years, as long as I've been playing and coaching football and watching it, you know, and you start from just inside that 10-yard line, boy, it's, it's really tough. It's nice to start somewhere down around the 5-yard line or inside the 5, because things do get a little bit tougher down in there. In comes the goal line offense, powers the lone back behind Fletcher. Connor's in motion. Fletcher's going to roll out. He sees the goal line. He throws the ball and touchdown. Who is that on the reception? Num We'll see the reception. I think that was number 80, Don Hauser. Yes, number 80, Don Hauser, the tight end, in for six points and the touchdown. Second touchdown of the evening with 7-11 left in the second period. Yeah, a tough play to defense down there because now again with a, a quarterback with the running capabilities of Derek Fletcher, Kevin, you know, that puts a lot of pressure on those corner people because now do you come up or do you stay back? And, of course, there I think they decided they made the decision to come up and try and prevent him from running the ball in for a score, and he just dumped the ball to uh, Hauser there for, for the score. That was a nice play by Derek. He did a good job of reading that, like you said. Falcons are going to go for two on this play to make up for that missed extra point. Wesson skirts across the playing field. Fletcher is going to go on the option, and he gets close, and he's in. Nice play by Derek Fletcher. He lunges for that one, and he picks up the extra two points. We're going to call that one back, though, Kevin. If you notice, when Weston was out here in motion, he did make one step or a move towards the, the goal line, you know, and so he was, you know, that was the legal procedure, you know, because he was in motion, and he decided to retreat again, and we're going to have to try that one again. And that's the call, and that's going to move the Falcons back. Now it'll be interesting whether they go for two or bring in the kicking squad. That's what the coaches on the sidelines are debating. I think we're going to go for two, and I think we're going to see the same play we scored a touchdown on, Kevin. I think they're going to do the same thing. At least there we have the option of running or throwing the ball. And, and we'll see. There seems to be some discussion on the field. Dave Hartman sends in number 35. That's Jason Cosa with the play, and they're going to go for the two. They'll have to go from the seven yard line. Well, let's see, see what happens here. Kevin, it's a chance for those folks out there again to do some coaching there. And of course, do it now and don't wait till the play's over. 
I agree with you. It's to be to go go with the successful play of Fletcher on the boot pass, and that's what we're going to go right now. But he's taking it all the way in himself, and he had an easier time that time than the play before, and that's seven yards in for the two-point conversion. So, so far, Derek Fletcher has been a part of all 14 Falcon points this evening, throwing two touchdown passes and scoring the two-point conversion. Again, that's, you know, like we said earlier, that's a tough play to the defense and the thing which the Cowboys didn't do was you know they didn't have anybody really forcing Derek right now you know to make a decision whether to run or pass and uh, made that one look too easy. Derek of course Fletcher. that's the way we want him. Derek Fletcher doing a big turnaround this year. He uh, com commanded the Falcon offense for seven games last year and he was fourth out of four quarterbacks in the SBC passing. He was 19 of 40 with a 47.5 percentage for 223 yards with two TDs last year and six interceptions. But already he's uh, got his two TDs for this year and his throwing and running have been impressive this evening. And I think the reason he has been so successful here recently, Kevin, with these runs is the fact that what we've done previously in a football game, you know, we were so successful inside that now, you know, Cheney's trying to gear their defense to stop that and, uh, you know, giving you something outside. Matt Marakovich has been doing a nice job of kicking off for the Falcons. And the Cheney receiver is going to get that on his 10 and bring it out to the 25-yard line where he'll be stopped by a surge of Falcon defenders as they unpile. Stopped by Rob Toville. Rob Toville, number 22 in on that stop. Again, good job by the specialty teams because now we, of course, would reach one of our goals anyways, Kevin. In fact, that they kept him inside the 30-yard line. That's doing a pretty good job because most kids can't kick the ball that deep. And if, if you can get down and stop people inside the 30, you know, your kids have done a, an excellent job on that specialty team. Right now at this base, the Falcons will reach probably many of their goals this evening. And they're usually, coaches do set up the goals for the team to meet each game. And there's a wide variety, both offense, defense, and special teams. I formation behind Turek. He drops straight back to pass. And he's being pressured by 73. And it's going to run him around out of bounds. Number 73 for the Falcons is tackle Rich DeChalk, a senior. And he puts the pressure to run Turek out of bounds. And he'll lose about three on the play. I think already we've forced Cheney to change the game plan, Kevin, because they, you know basically we were trying to run the football earlier in the game. But again, you know you get behind by two scores to us. And you know you better put the football up in the air and try and get back in the game in a hurry because especially the way we're going tonight, uh, they haven't seen the ball much. Cowboys definitely do have to play some catch-up ball. They're down 14 points, and they really haven't been able to generate much offense after their first series. They garnered two first downs, but that wasn't about it. Switch in the defensive front, and Turk's on the option. He's going to take it himself, but he doesn't get very far. Pickup of about three. Good play there by the number 29, Chuck Hamill, the strong safety. That was a real good football play there, Kevin, because it, as we've pointed out too before, you know, open field tackling is, is quite difficult and uh, looked like they had some running room there and Chuck made a nice nice, nice tackle. Yeah, it's, it's good to see the Falcons doing strong offense and defense. Defense is doing what they need to do, three plays and out, and the offense keeps the ball. Actually, it gets boring for the defensive players because they're never in the game. So, But it's always their job to be three plays and out. Third down and long, 12 yards. Turek's going to try to pass the ball. He pitches it to number 29 for the Cowboys, but he goes nowhere. Mark Gilchrist, number 79, John Polish makes the stop, and he gets a TFL there, a tackle for a loss, and that'll bring up fourth down. So we'll see Chuck Wesson return the ball in a punting situation for the third time this evening. Well, we're really dominating that line of scrimmage now, Kevin, because, you know, when the ball snapped, boy, there's three, four white jerseys with about a yard or two penetration every play, and that's not a good sign for the Cowboys. This is right now for the Falcon defenders. When you're in there, make your tackles now because you're not going to be in there very long. All Falcon defenders on the line of scrimmage, but they're going to set up the return. Another low punt. Wesson's going to field this one. First one he got a chance to. He goes back three yards. And he's still going. He gains back those three. And a nice hit out of the Cowboys. He's going to pick up two on that carry, on that return. But he did about nine yards worth of running. At least. <laughs> well, a little finesse there by Chuck Wesson. It's good effort. Not much in the end result. But that's first down and ten for the Falcons inside Cowboy territory. Now we've got about five minutes left here in the first half, Kevin. And we are just inside the 50 yards. 
yard line, so we still got time to put another one on the board. Fletcher still at the helm. Two wings for the Falcons. Weston's one of them in motion. Fletcher's going to pull back, and he's going to throw the ball. He evades some Cowboys, and he's on his own now. And he's going to pick up 10 yards on the play. He's uh, down to the Cheney's 37-yard line. Well, Derek Fletcher's getting his chance to do everything tonight, pass the ball and run. We said earlier, Kevin, it's like having a fourth running back there in the backfield because, you know, he carried the ball just as well as anybody else we have back there. And instead, you know, he's going to fight the passer, so there's a lot of pressure on the defense. I've had a lot of Falcon players tell me that Derek Fletcher is about the best all-around athlete out there on the field, the best, in, the best person in shape and one of the quickest. So he's showing his moves this evening. Also, we got to give credit where credit's due. Again, the offensive line is doing a good job. They've opened up the holes for the backs, and they've allowed these 14 points to come quick and easy for the Falcons. Number 80, Don Hauser, the senior inside linebacker tight end, was shaken up on that play. He'll have to sit out a play. I don't think he was seriously injured. Incoming for him is number 42, John Mil Milakovic. And he'll be taking over at tight end. Please, of course, forgive us for any mispronunciations of the names. We're still working. It is the first game. It always takes us time to get all the names of all the players down. Yeah, we have trouble with Smith and Jones every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, we always find something to have trouble with. First down and 10, ball resting on the Cowboys' 37-yard line. Wesson in motion. And that's Marakovic on the carry, and he gets good yards on the play, four yards. If I would have been able to pick up at least four yards on just about every play, and when you're gaining four yards on the ground every play, there's nothing that the defense can really do to stop you. That's Kosa in motion, and Fletcher on the bootleg, and he's still moving. He sees the first down marker, and he gets just about to where he has to be. He's just inside the 25-yard line, just outside of it. So they're going to measure it here. You know, it's interesting in this nice warm night. We really haven't got a chance to talk about cramps yet. We'll get into that. We'll get Dr. Grant over there to... Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a Cheney Fitch game, you know, unless Randy gets a his chance to talk about cramps. <laughs> I know we didn't pass up our opportunity last year or the year before, and hopefully someone will get cramps tonight. <laughs> the only difference, I think, this year, yeah, was the fact that it's probably about uh, somewhere around 80 degrees, though, and that's kind of cool because, you know, we've been used to this summer, especially, you know, lately having temperatures up around the 90 degrees. Yeah, it's surprising how good the field looks, too. Because of the drought, one would expect the grass to be dried off. There are brown spots, and I know come later in the season, if it rains, there'll be the famous holes of mud around the 30-yard lines on the field. But right now, the field looks in pretty good condition. Um, we were talking away there, and it's <laughs> I don't think the Falcons had enough for the first down. There. No, but we did miss the <laughs> measure. They're about a ball length short of a first down. So it'll be interesting what the call will be. They're just going to go straight ahead for the first down. Fletcher's going to plow through with the quarterback sneak, but that was probably one of the oh, least performed of all the Falcons' plays so far this evening. That was not very inspiring. And that's all that matters at that point. 3.15 remaining in this first half. Falcons within distance and enough time to score again. They're on the 27-yard line of the Cowboys.
handoff is to Connor, 34, and he's going down to the 20-yard line. He'll pick up of about six on the play on that first down play, so it'll bring up second down and around four. It'll be interesting to see the stats after this game. Every back for the Falcons should have there's themselves a nice tally of yards. Probably there's only one team to be concerned about. Yeah, but I think Cheney had that. Well, they had about four or five successful football plays there on offense, and then since then, of course, they haven't had the football. I think if everything that uh, we would have to record on would be, yeah, the Falcons. Tofield wide to this side of the field. Handoff is to. Wesson and he doesn't get very much in that play. Good defensive play by the Cowboys. Only a pickup of about two, so it'll bring up third down in short for the Falcons. Just about two minutes remaining here in the first half of play. Rakovich the lone back. Jeff Scott wide out to this side of the field. And to bring Connor in motion, and Fletcher's going to roll out once again, and he's going to throw it to number 10. Jeff Scott, nice catch on his part. He makes a reception down in the three yard line. Good play by split end Jeff Scott, number 10. He's a junior. <laughs> I remember him telling me about how well you taught him to scoop those up, and I definitely used it out there on the playing field right now. So that'll bring up first and goal, a good first and goal from our standards because they only have three yards to put it into the pay dirt. 1-12 remaining in this first half. The Falcons will probably be able to put on another six points and tack on another for seven, and they'll be able to go in the halftime here sitting very pretty. Hand off to Marakovic, and he fights through all the way over the goal line, and that's a touchdown for Matt Marakovic, and that's six more points with 55 seconds remaining in the half. He just basically fell into the end zone there. So the Falcons are now up by a score of 22-0. That's 22 nothing. Of course, being in this press box, we're always being harassed by other people. Everyone, Everyone's an expert as they stand here. Please, people, do something with yourselves. Come on in, Jay. Come on in, Jay. Come on, come on, come on. Pull that, pull that to say, you know, the offense, especially Kevin, has been uh, fantastic. And that one will be good. Number 30 is the kicker. We don't have numbers. Greg Buttress, we get his name from Ken Carana. It's good. That'll bring the Falcons up. That, that'll bring the Falcons up by 21 points. And the Cowboys still have a goose egg on the boards there. <laughs> Right now, I'll take the time to, since the Falcons are doing so well, it's a good time to talk about the future. And I mentioned earlier, next week we will be traveling to Menor to take on the Menor Cardinals. After that, we have an interesting uh, schedule this season. We have a